for like five five more Destiny Bros that want to listen and want to hear it, they'll each pay a dollar. So he's out. It's he's a out bidding bidding. war. Yeah, he's out yeah it's a bidding war for who wants to talk <laughs> money, about what. Money, money. Anyway, what's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, episode fifty nine of the Little Big Cast. Welcome. I am super excited to be back. It's been a Make while this. since we've all been in the same room. We yeah, recorded yeah. last week uh, during this. the E3 press conference for Sony, right? right? It was kind of virtual. We all piped mm-hmm. into the same place, but I, I felt your love. But prior to that, me. prior to that, I missed the week before it's true. because I was busy with work. It's I true. almost so missed so today because I was busy with work. So I was, I was stressing out quite Priority, a bit. So sir. My name is Jeff Hawks. I'm super excited um, to be here with you as listeners and anyone watching in the stream. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Around this friends, yes. surrounded by fellow yes. nerds, this it's is a good uh, day. it's hard to beat that. So with me, as always, uh, the fedora Drew Tyler. It's a Fedini. A Fedini. Fedini. The Fedini right. Drew right. Tyler. Oh, thanks, Andy. Bash. But just off of his uh, forty-eight-hour film festival, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, after after the uh, winning, the award screening was last night. So oh, okay. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, the also post forty-eight hour film festival. Hello. Rachel Hannah is. Yes, hi. She survived as well. I did. That's totally good. Wasn't, out. wasn't yeah, I survived. Thank goodness. Yes. I'm glad that you both survived. We did. We made it. And uh the uh you know the PhD pursuing Miss Robin Hazel. Yes, uh, just taught the last class for the summer today. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you so did nice. a block class. Yeah, I did a block okay. class. A 7 a.m. block class. Damn. Twice a week, 7 It was great. Every Monday was Bagel Mondays, so. Well, that's cool. <laughs> it's just like, Why? we're all doing this together. We will survive. <laughs> cool. So uh, typically with the little big cast, what you get at the first of the show is kind of a wrap-up of what we've been doing, and today it probably will be a little bit longer than you're used to getting because it's been a, long I, it's been a while latest, yeah. and uh we haven't talked since e3 right we haven't we haven't gotten together and chatted mm-hmm. since e3 so if uh if you in chat have anything that you want to uh to talk about you have anything you want to uh, get information about please let us know uh and we'll kind of just incorporate it into the podcast today but um to kick weeks off who wants to go first um, uh, um, rock, paper, scissors, 48 Rachel. hours, yep. people. Okay, yes. right. One okay. of the two of you go. Right. Um, I don't know where to start. So we did the we did the 48 hour thing. I believe we talked since then, though, didn't we? We, didn't we, we briefly talk? hit it in some of the yeah. chat. Some other places, right. But. So, you know, that was kind of a thing. Uh, some award ceremonies and stuff. Unfortunately, my team did not win anything. Nothing? But I know, right? I was kind of bummed. Surprised. It was a good wow. I'll show you the video. Mm-hmm. But it was, it happens, it happens. Um, there are better teams out there, so... There, there are also worse teams out there, but so uh, not not too upset about it. Um, and I've been doing the Borderlands, Borderlands, I'm playing Borderlands, the pre sequel, along with playing my Animal Crossing game again what? as well. Yes, pick it up. What else? How else would I want to spend my? Is summer? everything overgrown? Uh, my hair was messy, and it took me a while to get the right hairstyle going. And I'm trying to think if Priorities. I lost lost any characters. No, I did just get a monkey though. She's kind of cute. Her name's Shu or She. Or something like that. She's cute. The uh, Pokemon died down on Pokemon a little bit. Beat the Elite Four, and I just like, Meh, okay. Every now and then you gotta have a break. You know, yeah, you know, it's true. Um, and then I've been uh, Witcher. Witcher's on my list. And then not only Witcher, but I think I'll be picking up the Batman as well. Not for PC though. That was purchased though. today. <laughs> right? That was purchased today for me. <laughs> There's a joke. I gotta get to Witcher too. But Glenn and I will certainly join. Witcher, How bad Witcher is it? for sure. But I just need to. I. Mm, 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 uh, eh, one day but maybe maybe i'll get to batman before i get to witcher but we'll see what happens you should push yeah. through witcher I witcher's know, awesome that's what i hear but it's, but but it's I gigantic I mean, that's like mounting a man like, that's a <laughs> massive like i don't know you don't really have to push through i don't know it's that's also a, an investment that's a huge thing. yeah you just you just invest a couple hours a day <laughs> That's hard. I just don't need sleep. Week, I'm oh, and I'm still trying to get a job. <laughs> Post graduate. I know. I applied. I applied for two more. Good. Good. Hey, are you putting my name down on these jobs? I on on one of them. That's, yeah. That's gonna be the key. It's what that's I hope. Do you recommend people put their re- rec- like uh, contacts references. on their mm-hmm. uh, references yeah. on there? Yeah. I never do. I always uh, say ask. Uh, ask if you references want available because I I like maximize all of Everything the property. Else, right? Oh yeah. For within my resume. It within the the cover letter on the resume itself. I encourage good students whom I would give a glowing review to to put my name on there because most most of them are applying around this area. Right. And I know right. somebody at lots of places. Everywhere. <laughs> so even just that name being on there is enough for them to go. Oh, if Drew's one of the references, I'll look through. Oh, so cool. for some mm-hmm. for, for this small niche, it 
That makes sense. Yeah, so there's a couple of them. So um, one of them is kind of out there and not really applicable in the major, but it's still a job, yeah, it makes right? makes money, yeah. it's a Right, job. though, and it, all you need is a GED. So I'm one step. Hopefully I'm not overqualified because I'll run into that problem now as well because that's a problem. Sad day. Out. You're too smart to work here. Sorry. You can just, <laughs> like, look, I'll, I'll talk really slow. I know. I promise. I'll myself down. A great actress. <laughs> I'll go bleach blonde if you want me to. I was a zombie, <laughs> was a zombie killer once in a movie for a student. <laughs> For a final project. That's good times. That's good. That's good, that's, good that's, times. That's, that's the dedication right there. There you go. I wouldn't oh. do that for anybody. And, I wouldn't um, either. And, 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 and. Yeah, no. Well, um, shout out to some boys that have been listening to us, I guess. I can't think of their names right now. But I, I do, shout I, out I to believe. People. But if you're listening, we'll you know later. who you are. We'll do it later. Okay. Cool. Cool. Drew. Um, so off the, off the end, 48 as well went well for us as a, as a team. I have... I call it a professional team, but really we're just a bunch of buddies that have done it for every year that it's been in Salt Lake. So this is our ninth year. And for the last in fairness, you are all video professionals. Are, right. Like our nine to five is video. Yeah. That's kind of what's jacked up about the whole thing. Like you're yeah. pros entering an amateur competition. True, true. Hashtag not fair. But, but um, you won the what award? We won the choreography award this year. <laughs> because, and here's why. Every year you draw a genre, and for the last five years, um, we've, been, we've had this idea of doing a musical – because er, nobody wants that. And we thought, well, if we got that, what would we do? And so five years ago, we came up with this fi fun idea of doing a newsroom musical where the, the storyline takes place between, like, during commercial break, and there's no news to be had. And that's as far as we got. And so every year, we're like, ooh, that'd be fun to do. Ooh, that'd be fun to do. So finally this year, we drew a musical, and we're like, we're going to do it. And you know, it wasn't, we, I think we wish we probably had like 20 more people to make it more choreography and make it right. a little bit more exciting. But when we were done with it, we were all like totally satisfied. We're like, cool. that's what we wanted to make for the last five years. Superhuman out. Superhuman. Like, this is it. I don't think we'll be doing another year, honestly. Really? Yeah, I I think the 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 rest of the human team they're pursuing a look for it, a a full feature film <gasps> that they will enter into Sundance to be shot during the Comic Con this year in Salt Lake. Like, really? So Con so is it a Comic Con documentary? Not really. It's a full like uh, heist movie centered around a comic con the script and storyboards on my desk we've been talking about it for eight months or so and at first it was like let's chase giant funding and then it came down to the hell let's just do it with whatever we find and so we're wow. gonna scrape together pennies and, and shoot so. you guys are your own kevin smith yeah it's, it, that's, that's right. the style that we went for we're like you know what there are other people who've gotten this far. people will respect it. this yeah so <laughs> we're gonna go so that's gonna fundage. be fun but we had fun at the 48 it was great uh, this we won best choreography because there was no choreography in any other films <laughs> i mean that's that's yeah. the way it works. So that's um, yeah. I wanted to get best audience. That always means more to us than any of the other awards. But the team that took best audience in our screening, because they have one for each screening, mm -hmm. the team that took it in our screening was the uh, the guys that were in the bookstore downstairs, like the, the Wildcat. Oh, chat. really? Interesting. Yeah. And they were sponsored. They won last year all over, so they had a sponsor of some sort that let them shoot on a red camera. Oh, wow. Which was like, oh, it was beautiful pictures. We didn't love their story, but audience did. So I love the guys, so I'm proud of them. Anyway. Cool. I always love those things, super fun. Other things in my life, I've, I've squeezed in as much Witcher as I can, which I love. I'm just enjoying that story. There was that last little bit where I had to check with you guys. I was like, okay, Stacy wants to play with me, and she wants to see story to right. evolve with me, but I just went through some crazy <laughs> batshit <laughs> nutness, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, is there more? Because you guys were just slightly ahead of me. So, so far, we're safe. Yeah, there's nothing like that scene is throughout the rest of the it's, it's just dark, right? And I don't know that that's horrible, but... I, the less I have to explain. You know, so to throughout the entire, so throughout the entire game, I I only yeah. experienced two. I'm at the I'm at I'm at the last like three missions. I've only experienced oh, two sex scenes. Oh, and then the the crazy decapitated, murdered, naked people scene as well. That was the one. Yeah. Spoiler alert: that exists in a game. It happens, but it's we don't weird. know the context. Yeah, you don't don't worry about context. Uh. Um, it's yeah, so you should be good. It, yeah, I think it's been, and and she played the Tomb Raider, which also has its dark kind of right. mm -hmm. sacrificing and dark, just dark stuff. So she and she just likes story. Yeah. So, okay. but she's been so focused on school, um, taking two master's classes at one time. It's just like <laughs> amped her up. Like mm -hmm. every five minutes, is like everything okay? We doing all right? You know, do you need time to read? Do you need time I to hate write? Everything. And, and like, <laughs> yeah. So today, it's done. Today is the day where she's she really? turned in everything wow. from class that ended yesterday. They even made their own video, block. and then today's vlog is over, mm -hmm. so she's very, she's oh very my satisfied. So um, that's exciting. And then the more exciting news in, in Drew's life is that I use my summers to do professional development, as they call it, where I basically I go and shoot and freelance, and it counts for, uh -huh. like, it looks good on my CV and stuff. But in the last week, I have nailed down um, 
two gigs, two traveling gigs, one to Park City to shoot for the No Barrier Summit. So it's a disability summit where they give people with like disabilities the ability to like go into the crater, like scuba diving or rock climbing, what? like all the things you'd never be able to do. Wow. For, like kayaking, they get guys in there and they just teach them how to kayak. Even if they have no arms, they'll find a way to put paddles That's on them. It's awesome. just so awesome that they can break barriers. That is fantastic. So I get to go shoot that and tell stories for a couple of days in Park City. Um, that sounds really cool. So that's going to be fun. And then I just nailed a gig that I'm pretty excited about for a, uh, I believe it's a, a, like a Christian, not a rock group, but like a, like a Christian fellowship, like a youth group. They do a week in Detroit, and every year they all come together to have this giant like worship. And so every night of the week they're in a stadium, and, and uh, my buddy has like designed the, the stadium and worked with the, the, just the crew that puts on the nightly shows because this is like, I'll show you the stage, but it's like, huge days with, with lights and TVs everywhere, and they want me to shoot all day long and make videos to play back nice. at night. So I've got seven days in Detroit coming up. So wow, I'm pretty excited. It's kind of it's kind of a fun fun. D- so yeah, life is life is going from la di da to whoop <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So that's my that's my feeling. And Stacy is much less yeah, angry. Yeah. <laughs> if I can bring home the money when I go play, then that's always better. Absolutely. <laughs> What about you, Robin? What have you been doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, doing a little bit of a smidgen of Witcher because I just keep dying. So that's the thing. And then, like, the loading screens. I'm, I'm like, sneaking in games of Plants vs. Zombie <laughs> during the loading screens. It's good. I was doing Peggle. Yeah. Same, yeah. Same. <laughs> it's like, this is so long. I have no patience anymore. <laughs> so what are you – are you stuck on a mission? Um, or are you just kind of, like – Dying sporadically. Uh, I'm, I'm dying sporadically at this yeah. point. And I'm I got to the rage You just one. run. You Wait, just boxing. run into places. No, That's I got to the... I've, I'm at the point where it's the optional mission. I just got done dealing with Caramints. Mm-hmm. Like, just gotten out of that little cave thing. Beat the little demon dude. Nef- Nephilim something, whatever. It started with an N. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. All I know <laughs> is that I was like, I hate <laughs> you. But you did it. But I did it. That's awesome. It, it happened. And uh, what was really funny is that she was, uh, like, she said, like, you know, stop over some time. And I'm like, I'm there. Huh. <laughs> it's like direct shot. Like, what you got? One of my two scenes. And, then, <laughs> and then it's like, well, here's the magic lamp to go and do something. Like, oh, really? You really? You can run back and see her whenever. Yeah. <laughs> she, she has a little plan for you. Uh, but been playing a little bit of Witcher. Um, oh, crack me up when you put that when you said not like she has to be a sorceress or who else can stay inside of her. I know. <laughs> like, the, yeah, the, that was the, funny. the cleavage, like, the cleavage. The only like, way the those boobs are staying here. where they're at is if she's using magic. <laughs> it's like, there, there is only one way that her boobs can stay up here and inside the shirt, and that is sorcery. Yep. That is sorcery. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I so, good, yes. Good insight. But there, there's me. Um, my child has a loose tooth. Finally. <gasps> it took seven years like we're just a little bit behind on the this is the first loose tooth this is the first loose tooth gotten how are you gonna rip it out (laughs) yeah do you have a plan (laughs) wow do you have a plan (laughs) do you have a plan of action always have a plan uh not necessarily i just remember um call if you need help yeah we've done this (laughs) bow and and arrow (laughs) oh that's a good one yeah dude wow i've I've done done, like they don't suspect it i've done the one two three but you pull one two one Psych trust issues. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that explains a few things at this point. Right? <laughs> Oops. Oh, um, played a little bit of Borderlands. Have not really progressed too much. Done a whole lot. You uh, guys did the Monday at Moxie thing again, right? Yeah, yeah. We How'd did that go? I almost jumped in. Almost is the key word. Yeah, it was, it was early. Right next uh, next Monday, we'll have to maybe we'll just play the second one with you and and Wigs. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Be fun. Okay. But I'm dying to finish pre-sequel. I'm like, right. what happens now? <laughs> we already had like We're so close. We yeah. had the dude bro solution of like let's say let's staple the eye together and shoot it with a laser because that'll work. <laughs> there's, uh, <laughs> there's some pretty funny missions. Like I really like the one where you have to or claptrap. You you really give a claptrap. Like he draws he draws Jack. It was cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I was, was there. I was yeah. in the I was in the video. I was watching <laughs> was for that part. That was funny. And making me. And is, wasn't Jack like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what <laughs> is this? <laughs> yes. Very cool. But right yeah, on. Uh, gaming and working and reading a whole lot for the dissertation. So. I was wondering if you've made any progress. Yeah, I've, I've been making uh, pretty solid progress on it, which I, I just, I want this done and out of my life, but it's so, like, it's fun to do. I love, like, reading about it. I'm like, yes! <laughs> but... But that's my maniacal, steady self. 
<laughs> Very cool. That's good. So I, um, for me, it's been a big couple of weeks. I went to E3, which yeah. is pretty cool. Really? Uh, so yes. a lot to talk about on the E3 side. I wanted to talk a little bit, though, um, before we get, you know, we've got a lot to get into today. Our Indie Game of the Week is Ali Ollie. Yep. Uh, we've got, you know, the normal breakdown of new releases and news. But I did want to kind of talk about E3. And, right. and I'll, I'll incorporate my week into our conversation, if I'll that's cool with you guys. You. Yeah, please do. <laughs> so, um, first of all, E3 was awesome. Uh, it was it was just so cool. Like I've I lived in LA for a little while, and so it was really cool to go past the Las Vegas Con or the Los Angeles Convention Center and see, you know, Nathan Drake up on the center hall yeah. and out, outside, so just this awesome. massive. <laughs> Just it's like it's, like it's just so cool. Blocks and it's all just yeah. So stickers so the vinyls. main building was wrapped with a Nathan Drake poster for Uncharted 4. Um, the hallway connecting the west and south halls was um, you had a Fallout poster, a Fallout 4 poster, and then a huge Batman Arkham Knight poster that just like it's like the whole hallway though. Yeah, it's and so like I, I, I've also what's crazy is I have um, this is on the outside of the building. When I say hallway, I mean like there's a giant like tunnel that connects these two buildings, right? And so I, I worked for a little while in um, graphics production. Right, you know. And so like I know pricing-ish, kind of what it costs mm. to make a print and wrap mm. a wall that size. Like just the Arkham Knight print that was up was realistically like pushing a million dollars. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't doubt like, it. Like you're, you're on the high end of the hundred thousands. Like it's, wow. it's, like, like the not like the seven eight and nine hundred thousand marks I don't, I don't doubt and uh it's so the the price that's invested like the cost of of this marketing um you know opportunity is pretty staggering and to be going through i mean we were all at ces last year and to be going through the different uh venues to see the different booths uh it was just it was fantastic sony's booth was totally new um so last year's ce or last year's e3 they used their CES booth, mm -hmm. which was also the booth they used this this year. So Sony's used the same CES booth two years in a row now. Which is a good and at and at E3 last year they used that same CES booth. And so for E3 this year it was different. It was changed up. And it uh, this is like the prom dress thing. Like you have to change it every year. You can't have the know. same booth. I think if you spend that much money on it, you want to. Yeah. I think you maximize different. it, right? And if it's yeah. good, you just you tweak little things to make it unique to that year, but yeah. you keep the general feel, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so out panels and change colors. Or yeah. So as far as the Sony booth goes specifically, um, I wanted to mention a game that should be getting like eyes on. Like everybody in the chat, if you've if you've heard of Horizon, you've you've got to spend some time researching Horizon. It is um, it's fantastic. So Horizon Zero Dawn is the game that they showcased where you had kind of the cave woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking girl with the bow and arrow, right? It was we cave, call it punk. cave punk. So cave punk. what's cave really punk. cool is um, I was able to go through the the behind closed doors kind of teaser preview um, that they held, and they didn't allow video cameras in, they didn't allow any audio recording equipment, but um, they were like, you know, what, whatever you see, you can go talk about later. And so in conversation with um, another person that had seen it earlier, I learned that we saw different things. Oh. So what's cool is they showed they showed the same scene that was shown in the press conference, the Sony mm -hmm. press conference, but in the scene I saw, they took a much more stealthy approach. So in the E3, E3 press conference, uh, they ran out and they just started bowing dudes, right? Like they just started yeah, shooting yeah. bows and arrows right. at people as fast as they could and everything kind of went crazy and the big giant uh, robot came in and the big fight happened, right? So in the demo that I saw, she actually snuck in, stabbed the little surveyor robot, right. and then snuck to the back of the herd and started picking off oh. like members of the herd one at a time, like stealthily. Mm -hmm. So they were dropping these canisters that were on their back, which were used for energy. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what I saw. So she picks off a few before they get startled, they run away, and then the big giant monster comes, and she killed it in a different way than she did in the E3 press conference. But in the conversation that I had with another person that was at the show, he mentioned that the girl went the opposite end of the map and booby trapped it with explosives. Oh. And then came back around and spooked the herd and they ran into the booby trap. I love this that idea. Is and they so were blown fancy. up. And so it's love it. Like it's just super, super cool that um, you know, first of all, it's Gorilla Games. 
I've never thought of Guerrilla Games as anything other than Killzone. Mm -hmm. To see them create a world that was as vibrant and felt as alive as like an Uncharted does. Like Uncharted, the first one was really noteworthy because of how vibrant and alive the world w was and how, how real it felt, you know? Like right, yeah, it, feels it felt colorful and it felt mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. um, so it was nice to see a Guerrilla Games that kind of had that feel as well. Um, I love the flexibility within it. I loved, um, I loved the character and I loved the setting. Like they called it in the in the um, closed door conference, they called it a post post apocalyptic world. So like restarting. So, so it's after <laughs> after the chaos of a post apocalyptic <laughs> like Holocaust. You know, like the where people have reformed into tribes and and are learning to start basically at the beginning all over again. I think the idea of, so this is why I think it's cool, because it, it, the first time I heard it, I was like, that's weird. This is why I think it's cool. I think of post-apocalyptic, and I still think chaos. Okay, so like retribalization, kind right. of. Right, so when I, I, I think a better way of saying it, it would say like after post-apocalyptic, or like, I don't, post -post I don't know. Post-apocalyptic? Post-post-apocalypse is what they used, and it sounded weird, but like the concept makes sense to me that after the chaos yeah. and the struggle, like, you know, the dying out of the people that grew right, up right. with a civilization and with mm -hmm. technology, following their life, um, I think you'd start to move back to a sense of normalcy, like where you maybe told stories about, you know, my grandmother used to tell me about the buildings and the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. You'd move past that to where you are Dang. having to survive. And it, it just felt really cool. I'll leave it at that. It was, it was very cool. I'm so excited for that. Did you guys uh, think fall 2016? Did you guys, so that was my game of the show. Did you guys have a game of the show? I had a, I had a game of the show that I really, really want to see, but didn't give a date, and that was No Man's Sky. What is it? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. Yeah, No Man, I keep wanting to say No Land Beyond, but that's a gun in Destiny. See what you've done to me? Yep. <laughs> so No Man's Sky is one that I saw that I still want to see a date, and I can't wait to, to see how expansive it is. Pause, but hang on. Speaking of, speaking of No Land Beyond, yeah. Render got one last night in oh, Nightfall. Go, Render. <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Anyway, back to No Man's Sky. But that's, that's, that was my game of choice. Like, I was really excited about that. I mean, there were a lot the of dude, cool the, things. Dude, the, the way they introduced that was amazing, though, right? Yeah. It was pretty it's like, cool. like, we want to show you like, where you can go. I know, and just then like just, I was like, we're just like watching an episode of Cosmos now. This is right. great. It was like Neil deGrasse Tyson should have been on stage and be like, <laughs> the Cosmos. Yeah, no, I, uh, those are mine because I know that you two, I know exactly what your game of choices will be. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there a, yeah, the Sony exclusive one? Or? No, no, it can be any. Yeah, no. Well, of course, I'm excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 because I didn't think they were gonna do it. Like, right. yeah, nobody. They, they ended with Sony, and I was like, meh. And then I'm laying in my bed, taking a nap, and I'm getting these messages about. <laughs> I wake up, up, get up, get up. And I'm just like, I don't oh, feel bad for waking oh, you up. No, yeah. it was great. <laughs> so yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 for sure was mine. Awesome. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And then we all saw my my reaction oh my and gosh. absolute breakdown. The one tear. I think of like the Indian it was in like that one commercial. <laughs> it's pretty exciting, honestly. That was like out of it's kind of out of the blue. Like they, so, we like, should say it. It, it was Final it. Fantasy VII remastered, remake. right? Oh, yeah. like remake, 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 not remastered. The remake. No, you can always go to the last episode and go to like 51 minutes into it and then see it. And watch and her then cry. You know, and you'll Never. watch me cry and have a really genuine reaction to this. Like, yeah, but I mean, it was it was like out of out of left field. I think they had talked it about it and everybody would had like petitioned for it. But to mm -hmm. have them and and, and I think there. we'd given up on it, right? Yeah. Like we yes. gave up uh, because of last year, joke. right? Joke. Last like, year eh. they they teased like, the, the oh, port we're gonna was coming. we're gonna do something interesting, and it was the port, and everyone originally like was freaking out, was and like, then it was like <gasps> it was like the wind just got knocked <laughs> out of them, right? Yeah. And so yeah, it was that for me was really special too. Final Fantasy VII was the first time in a video game where I um, I think really felt like connected to mm -hmm. the people that I was playing yeah, um, and the, the characters that I was interacting with. Um, yeah, I, I loved, I loved that game. And so to see it, like I'm, I'm really trying to be cautiously optimistic. Like, opti cautiously optimistic. I don't want to get like my hype level to yeah. 10 because like this could easily destroy <laughs> Yeah, a, a childhood like love. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's really uh, it's really touchy. Um, if the, I know that they are doing a little bit of tweaking with the storyline, I'm okay with a little bit of tweaking. 
that's okay. But if Eris lives, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> like, that was, like, one that's of the, the moment. Yeah, because uh, the main reason I that cried. they said. Well, I was a 13-year-old boy crying in I the basement. I was bawling. <laughs> I was just like, I know that she's going to die, but you got to bring her back so I wouldn't progress in the story. And I would just keep leveling her up. It's like, I don't want to let you go. I can't do this. <laughs> That's crazy. So that was yours. So, yes. um, yeah, if, if in chat, if you have anything that you wanted to talk about, so X, Exilia, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. We've had this conversation before. We call him X. Ex if, uh, Exiliad is what I like to say. Exiliad. 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 That works, probably. Um, I but, uh, every time. so he, he mentioned Final Fantasy VII as well. I think that's probably something that resonated with a ton of people. I mean, obviously it did, right? Like, that was huge. We'll talk about it in our news. Um, outside of that, though, I, I wanted to talk about a couple of the indies that I saw that I really loved. Firstly, um, Abzu, that that, that looks cool. oh my gosh, it looks it it looks and it plays so well. So it is it is actually created by the um, the artist who formerly worked on that game company's Journey. Journey, right? So he worked on Journey, and that's why when I first saw the game footage, I was like, man, this feels familiar. Like this feels like that beautiful mm -hmm. kind of immersive Journey feel. It, that that we all kind of fell in love with, right? And to actually have you know hands on to be playing it, um, it it was fantastic. Like it's it's the same so kind of it, it creates this feel of like this desire to explore, and that's that's what I really enjoyed about it. Um, outside of that, I also played a really cool. So I'm a skier. I grew up skiing. Grew up playing in the snow. They had a a beta version of a game called Snow that is being um, developed by Poppermost that will be a free-to-play game coming out next year. Um, it is, it's just an open mountain, and you can put skis on or you can put snowboards on, and you can just ride the mountain. I think of that game Ski Jump that was on Windows 98. So it doesn't <laughs> feel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. So it, it actually controls similar to the way that Skate controlled, okay, the okay. EA game Skate. Um, so if you were to compare the, the two, like thing. Tony Hawk Pro Skater versus Skate, Skate felt very much more uh, realistic and fluid, where Tony Hawk kind of felt like Street but, Fighter turned right, into but, a <laughs> skateboard video game. Uh, which, by the way, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5's launch trailer just came out, and it looks horrible to me. Oh no. I think it looks like garbage. I'm like, oh no. like skateboards all electrified and looking crazy, like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of lame. Um, but holy cow, I do. I, I'm going to give props to Microsoft for a second as well. That Xbox Elite controller feels amazing. So sexy. I actually played a couple games using it, and um, it was it was so weird different. to get used to the back two bu buttons on your uh, middle fingers. But the the controller just feels like such high quality. Like it feels. Mm -hmm. You know, like the first time you ever held an, uh, an iPhone, how you were like, this feels like a real thing. Like this feels like quality I in my fancy. hand. I feel fancy. Right. <laughs> That's how this felt. And I mean, the, the responsiveness of the triggers was super, super sharp. Um, you could set it so that, you know, if you're playing a first person shooter, you want to be able to shoot really, really quick, right? You don't want to pull all the way back on your trigger, which is what you have to do with Destiny. You got to pull all the way back. This one, you can set it so that they lock out halfway down. So you're actually pulling the trigger, but you're shooting faster. Hmm. Super cool. Um, you could interchange, uh, the um, directional pad was interchangeable. So you could either have just an open faced kind of uh, thumb circle, roller. Yeah. thumb roller that you could just slide your thumb around, um, or you could slide in like the traditional analog pad uh, or directional pad. It was, huh. it was super cool. I, I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed E3 immensely. I thought it was really cool. And I thought Sony, especially once you got to the show floor, Sony blew everybody else out of the water. Like as far as what they had in their booth, what you could play, what they were talking about, far more interesting than anyone else. I mean, Microsoft, you could say was probably a close second, but dude, Nintendo had nothing yeah. interesting to it show at all. There, uh, like Game Industry uh, released an article that said Nintendo just needs to pull out of E3. Like yeah, if they're not gonna if they're not gonna that. show up if they're not gonna like show up and mean it, you're better off just not showing up at all because everyone like thinks you're did. just being apathetic. Like right. it, you're just there chilling, and it's it it makes no sense to yeah. do that. Last year, Media Molecule pulled out of 
E3 because they're like, well, we don't want to rush what we have and show you like a half done product. We want to make sure that we're doing this on our timetable and we'll give you something really, really good. And then they come up with dreams. I'm like, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Right. Did, uh, did Microsoft have their like, they've had for the last couple of years this setup where it's almost like little windows and like rooms with glass that had like four set around and you could, so when you're walking around, people would be inside playing connect games and all four of these little packets did they have that stuff? I didn't see anything like that so in the in the Sony booth you had um, s places sectioned off where they were using project Morpheus uh -huh. I didn't get to use Morpheus um, they were I spent my first day just scrambling to different meetings oh, yeah. so yeah, I didn't have time to do to anything do. yeah I was there I was there working I wasn't there like as a journalist or as a podcaster um, so I was working while I was there um, but uh, by the time I found out you had to actually get an appointment you had to download an app yeah. and then get your appointment through the app by the time mm -hmm. i did that they were booked all the way through yeah so i was, I was pretty bummed um but yeah it was it was a great show i felt like sony had a very strong presence um i i mean the other games that i i really am excited for obviously mass effect um will be awesome but that's not gonna be forever <laughs> yeah that's the hard thing is 2016 waiting, waiting, waiting. um Oh, dude, the Bethesda booth was pretty dang sweet, too. They had these cool little photo booths that you go in and take your take your picture in Fallout, you know, like have your photo impo nice, superimposed nice. into a Fallout scene. It was pretty sweet. But that pretty much wraps up my day. I've taken up a whole lot of time. Um, That's 20 minutes. But, it was but that was, it was good. It was yeah. Was yeah. It wasn't just us. It was E3. It was so uh, since we're going to be adding music in post, hey. why don't we just kick it over to Drew for the news? All right, let's do some news. So... First news, and a lot of this is E3 based, but the first one is that PlayStation will not be following Xbox's lead with the backwards of compatibility. We talked about that in Doi. the stream last week because, like, would they, should they? And you've kind of given us your thoughts on why it doesn't even matter. Right. But a lot of people were like, after Microsoft said, oh, yeah, you can, you can back, back play your stuff, we thought, well, maybe. But give us your explanation because so, I agree with you. I don't know that it even matters. So I think, first of all, I don't, I don't think – there are good enough numbers of people that even want this to justify doing it. Mm -hmm. There, There's a very loud minority, I think, that wants backwards compatibility. But statistically, like, the PlayStation 3, when it first launched, had backwards compatibility, and, like, 2% of users used it. That's... To build and invest the money that it would take to make a PlayStation 3 game play on a PlayStation 4, first of all, you have to remember, too, PlayStation 3 games were built around this cracked-out cell processor. Yeah. Like, it... It wouldn't run on the PlayStation 4 architecture because they screwed up the design of the PlayStation 3. So, like, Xbox, it's it's all designed on essentially the same yeah. kind of yeah, hardware. And so feasible. the the transition and backwards compatibility is, is easier. But first of all, if you look at the games that they're bringing from Xbox 360 to Xbox One... None of them look interesting to play. Like they and and I, I was in a conversation with somebody that was like, "Yeah, but Crash Bandicoot." And I was like, cool. "When's the last time you played Crash Bandicoot?" <laughs> and honestly, like that sh that crap feels dated, yo. Yeah, like that's the hard thing. Yeah. Super. Like there are games that I would rather just retain good memories of. Yeah, I don't want to. Rather spoil than it. get like um, I tried to play after I played Metal Gear Solid Four. I went back and tried to play Metal Gear Solid, and it just like it felt too clunky. Like it didn't f have and and the clunkiness of I the game kind of hurt <laughs> kind of hurt my experience and i and i stopped playing because i was like you know what i remember this game as being like the pinnacle of of all gaming you know and i i wanted to keep that and so i can and i can keep that in context for myself with you know within the the sphere that i got to play it you know 10 years ago um and i'd rather have that and have that be special than have it be something that i play now and i'm like Man, it just feels clunky yeah. and old and difficult to control. And, and that's just the nature of emulators. Any anytime you're going to try and change whatever the game's being processed on, it's, just, it's tough. Even the emulators on the iOS when you play games. <laughs> oh, I know. Different feel. It's just it's just a different. Experience. Feel like a cheater. Nobody's yeah. saying Borderlands One wasn't awesome though, X. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Still awesome. Just it like even it just feels that clunky compared to two. Yeah, absolutely. Two back. just felt better. Yep. And it's continued, yeah, go I ahead. I think the other thing, too, is that it's just like a security thing. So I'm not necessarily looking... I would not be interested in backwards compatibility to play Crash Bandicoot, but I would, like... It's just a convenience thing, so I can get rid of the shelf space that I have on my... Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, on my night on my stand because I have like my PS2, my PS3, my PS4. So and I have them in case like in, it's like I, in case I, you I, get no, pulled it, back. Yeah, I, I understand. E yeah, I even have my Xbox 360 and it's not plugged in and it's on a bookshelf, but it's like. What if? But what if I want to play Bioshock again? But what if yeah. what if I want to play Assassin's Creed <laughs> 2 again? So it's just it's I need it needs to be there for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't let go. I yeah. can't let go. Of so consoles. I think backwards compatibility would just clear up clear up some space I have, which would be kind of cool. But uh, at the same time, you're right. Like maybe maybe I shouldn't play those games again. I don't know. I would much rather <laughs> just I would rather they spend the processing power and the the attention to games and mm. making them yeah, like, uh, like uh, making them utilize the hardware as much as possible instead of backpedaling. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, as like, I don't want to say what Microsoft said. It's like, you know, for someone who doesn't want to play this game, we have a product for you and it's the backwards one. Yeah. Go yeah, and go it. and get the old console. I don't know. We all have them. Right. Right. So. It's super funny, too, because my friend and I, I think I mentioned this last week, my friend and I were talking about how he modded his Xbox One. Now he can play 360 games. So I was like, oh, that's what, maybe they did it so people would stop doing it legally and they can make money off of it. Yeah. Oh, yes. There we go. So. That makes sense. Yeah. Microsoft. Yeah. All right. News number two. Hang on. Is, so it's worth, it's worth mentioning. So uh, Sugarbeat Co. asked, um, you know, if they were able to play or they had Skyrim on the 360, would they be able to play it on the Xbox One? So this is a very specific list of what can and right. cannot be right. played as, as a backwards compatible game. If I remember correctly, Skyrim was not one of them. They were like all old kind of dumpy 360 games, right? Like, yeah. I don't recall seeing any on there that really um, were notable. Um, I don't remember seeing Skyrim on that, but if you just Google, like, backwards compatibility for Xbox One, you'll be able to find the full list of 100 titles. I'm, like, 99% sure, though, that Skyrim was not one of them. Yeah, I remember they did the same thing with, with PlayStation, like, right when it first came out. Like, here is the list that we have made backwards yeah, compatible. Right. A push to get them to go, if you're stuck with your 360 and you're worried about leaving it to go to the yeah. One. We're working on it. Yeah, yeah here's the reason why you go to the one, so that you, you can take this with you. And <laughs> right. So, so Please it, buy our system. They're settling into, into it, so <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so let's go. News, news number two, and I can't pull this up on the phone, but somebody wants to list off most popular E3 games by the numbers. I don't know. Did you already pull it? Yeah, yeah, number, it. number, number one was Shin Shinmu. Shenmue? Shenmue 3? Yeah, and then Final Fantasy was. So this was second. this was based wow, on impressive. this was based on like tweets going out okay. during the press conference and that like the sense. conversations that were happening surrounding games. Because okay. Shenmue launched the Kickstarter right away, so of course there's going to be That's a lot true. going on because everyone's going to be tweeting, tweeting about I put I I backed the Kickstarter. Look how cool I am! So right. and hello. They, they hit a million by the end of the night. Remember, I, I was like, I bet they hit five hundred thousand by the time you know. And mm -hmm. like they, I think they hit a million and had funded by the next day. Yeah, easy. they funded by the next day, and then um, that makes sense why they. Yeah, they set a Guinness yeah. World Record too, right? I think like for the fastest uh, funded. We know how these numbers run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the fastest Let's operationalize funded. these variables. <laughs> You're so nerdy. <laughs> so uh, Shenmue 3 was first. Uh, Final Fantasy the Final Fantasy 7 was number two. Followed was Halo 5. But these are like, but then it like They're significantly big drops. <laughs> like, these, are, these are these are gaps of like 100,000. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. So Shenmue, Final Fantasy, and then it's like <laughs> Halo 5. <laughs> A little bit of Call of Duty and then Fallout 4. See, I thought Fallout 4 would have, I thought Bethesda would have taken it. Yeah, I did too. Um, mm -hmm. A couple other interesting numbers. Let's talks see. about the games that got the most love, and surprisingly, Forza got. Forza. Which is <laughs> weird, right? You're kidding. I get no driving. Farming Super Mario Did you see that I, I, I went yeah. to the farming simulator <laughs> I <saw> booth? The, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm, I'm home. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, that's awesome. I, uh, that's, that's a fun way to do the numbers, right? Based on tweets and other things. Um, I saw a lot of talk of um, the Final Fantasy, and the um, I saw a lot of Halo talk, like just in my channels. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people are excited about that kind of stuff. So that's where I saw it. That's my numbers. That's by Drew's numbers. All right, news number three: standalone PS1 style DualShock 4 is going to be out in September. Have you seen pictures of it? We'll it's very cute. In there. It's, it's cute. It's a kind of a simple little gray looking. Old school. Old school. I think it looks uh, really cool. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. get. It. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> so they also have they also have the headset as well. Oh, do they? The yeah, colors? so they match. I, oh I won't get the headset because I, 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 I'm not gonna so get the headset. Fresh. But like I am gonna yeah. get the controller. It looks cool. It look. It has like this cool kind of like old school flair to it. I don't know. That's it so does. dumb that I even give a shit. But I'm, I'm <laughs> but gonna get good. it. Yeah. I, yeah. I might get some more controllers. I like playing like I the know, I four man games. I, mm. I would want a controller so I can play with other people because they're. 
They're not going to get controllers, and I just want you someone want to, to play <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> News number four, and we talked about this, so we don't have to spend much time on it, but the one terabyte PS4 Ultimate Player Edition was announced, so they didn't really do anything about that in the press conference. It was just kind of after the fact. It was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm anyway. glad they didn't announce that during Me E3. Too. Yeah, because I think that they, like, what they did with, uh, with both of the launches, like, the next E3, like, right after... Uh, PlayStation and Xbox had done their launches initially. Um, they had focused so much on the hardware that they didn't focus on the games for right. E3. It's just like, oh, no, 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 let's not. I'm do. so glad they didn't do this yeah. during E3. But that would have counted one more for, your, you for your tally. You got a, you got a point. Yeah, I would have got a point. I think you, I that one. you would uh, actually, I think I counted it up. You won with all the predictions. Interesting. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to buy you dinner again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys suck. <laughs> No, it's, yeah, I, it's I officially lost because I, I predicted counter to everything. <laughs> so next wow, year, Half Life Three is totally <laughs> not going to happen. It will not, not for sure. Not yeah, even for sure. coming close. Look, I'm trying. I'm okay. Double points for the Final Fantasy because that one you pulled out of like. I know, just no more. No, I won did. <laughs> the fact, I don't know. You got double points for me. <laughs> Um, anyway, Ultimate Player Edition, one terabyte drive. Was there anything else that changed on that? Yep, lower power consumption, uh, faster speeds. Faster speeds. So. It's I pretty just cool. Want it so I get the title of Ultimate Player. Ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> Which then you can also get tattooed across your upper lip. Right. Ooh, I want a like Schwarzenegger you. Edition PS4. That would. Or whenever you turn it on, it goes. <laughs> I drove down to the screenings last night with Wegs, and he has the Waze app with uh -huh. Schwarzenegger. So oh, that's geez. awesome. So every like five minutes, it'd be like. Everybody get down. <laughs> We're going left. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little annoying because the whole time I was on a, I was on a training phone call with oh, some really? guys. So I was like, he's driving and I'm hearing Schwarzenegger at my training call. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty funny. All right, let's I wrap up. I want this. <laughs> Fallout 4 PC mods will be playable on the PS4 eventually. So the um, – I didn't read that one. <laughs> so what's that one about? Fallout 4 mods. Do we have a mod in chat? Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it. Fallout 4 mod mods. The PC mods. Just saw it. <laughs> will be available. Yes, eventually. On, eventually. Like they're on PS4. So, so at, at E3, they announced that uh, the mods would be available for the Xbox One, and uh, people were upset because mods are fun and they're cool. Right. right. Um, and later that week, you play game stuff. later that week, Bethesda came out and said that um, eventually they'll be there for the PS4. It sounds like it's mostly waiting on Sony to make that happen. So um, we'll see. And that makes that makes sense. It makes good sense. All right, wrapping it up in the news world, number six. All the games that were announced or pre presented at E3 2015, uh. there were 25 Sony exclusives. Uh, what was it, 15 Nintendo? Nintendo exclusives and nine. Nintendo? They don't yeah, the they world. don't, yeah. And then nine from Microsoft. Yep, nine so. from Microsoft. So basically and we'll put that list in our show notes. So if you go to littlebigcast.com for this, sh this episode, you'll see if you want to. Yeah, it's pretty all. extensive. There's a there's a ton. Um, and we we were talking about how I mean, granted, it, we're we're looking way down the road, but we were talking about how Sony really didn't have a whole lot for this holiday season coming out. But 25 exclusives is, is quite a bit. That's yeah. huge for a show. Yeah, and that's wonderful. Yeah, it's gonna it was exciting. When they're coming out. Speaking of wonderful, we should make a plan right here and pitch our Patreon so that you can support us. But we should make a plan to go to the PlayStation Experience end of the year. That'd be cool. Because I think that there'd be so much to talk about and to share and if you like the way we report and talk about things if you like what we like um help us by jumping on that patreon.com slash little big cast and get us there yeah that'd be cool uh but that wraps the news yeah that's the news my friends then let's kick it over to rachel we also hang on since we're going to be cutting this anyway mm -hmm. uh in post and adding musics uh x yes i saw that super conducting hoverboard it looks awesome it did you guys look see like it a little jedi speeder it looks freaking sick it's like smoking out the bottom have you guys seen it i saw a picture and i was like it's on fire it's broken but it really smokes <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's, it it's a, so it's, it's the one that um who's making it lexus lexus that's so it is. looked similar to me um I, I mean, it doesn't matter if we have a conversation because we're cutting it up anyway, Yeah, right? we'll chop it up. So, yeah, we can talk to chat for a second. I just now got the mail that says Little Big Cast just went live. Oh, weird. <laughs> so wow. did you guys see the video where they put um, the uh, dry ice on that track and pushed the dry – it was yes. a, like a magnet yes. f caked in dry ice on top of another magnet, and they pushed it, and it was like yeah. – like just forever going around hovering. Like you didn't see that? Did see you didn't see it. I can tell from your face, face you didn't like see that. it. So that's awesome. <laughs> She's excited that is it. what um, I'm kind of intrigued. Google that shit. That's what it <laughs> yep. yeah, that's what it uh that's, that's what, what it looked doing? like. Oh, I don't know if like, that's what they're doing so exactly. Like they have dry ice so X is saying they fill it with <laughs> liquid nitrogen. Uh, oh. And and that's what super cools it. So anyway, we can get back to it. Right, uh, 
Yeah. So uh, for the PlayStation 4, we have Archive. Or I can't. I can never say that. Arcade Archives Raiders Five. Does that ever like we've said Arcade, Arcade Archives something? Archive. Is that is that like a, a it's just like a little like the archive of, of arcade games? I think so. Maybe. Because we say that every week. Because I haven't touched it. Okay, that's so what I it don't is. Wait, know. Is it no, every week. It's different. It says no, arcade, arcade archives something. Oh, how do we not? Look? I would play Joust again. It's like arcade archives <laughs> rating <laughs> five. Have gone Arca <gasps> arcade <gasps> archives. Arcade archives. Gauntlet together someday, maybe. <laughs> that would be fun. Okay, we'll find um, out. We'll Aster, Ast, East, Astbreed, Astbreed, Astbreed. <laughs> Attacking <laughs> Zagata. Batman Arkham Knight, Yay. Devil May Cry 4, Special Edition, Ender of Fire, Planet Side 2, Ride, Rip. Planet Side 2 is uh, free to play, so it's free, so pick it up. Love the F2P. I know too many people who are addicted. Ride, Riptide GPT 2, uh, Shantae, Risque's Revenger Director's mm. Cut, mm. Tour de France 2015. Is it Shantae? Shantae. Is that what it is? Maybe Shantae. It looks like Shantae, Shantae Risque's Revenge. Ooh, sounds dirty. Mm. Shouldn't and then uh, for the PlayStation 3, we have Don't Starve Giant Edition. I didn't like yeah, Don't Starve. I, it, I took a, okay. it took a really long time for me to like, try and get into it. And I'm just like, you know, if I really have to try, I probably should. Yeah, if you have to I try really that like hard, it's not worth it. Lot. It was like a Tim Burton made a game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the art. Everything else, I was like, meh. Yeah. 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 Like, don't die. Sorry. You died no, the first good. day. Well, there you go. All right, so our indie game of the week, as I mentioned earlier in the show, is it's going to be Ollie Ollie. Indie game, the indie game, the indie game of the week. That Drew int introduces every week with a, a nice little song. So it's thank like you, Drew. I bring it's my the Drew Diddy. I know. Um, so Ollie. this week we decided to review um, and kind of talk about Ollie Ollie. It's a game that was developed by uh, Tom Hegarty, right? Hegarty? Mm. It's got a Metacritic score average of 80. And I think... That's solid. I think that's I think that's probably, and we'll get into this a little bit heavier, but I, I, I tend to lean at probably an 80 as well. So the breakdown of the game, Ali Ali mixes one life, ga one life gameplay with over 120 tricks and grinds across 50 levels, 250 challenges, spot modes, daily grinds, basically complete all the challenges uh, to unlock a super skillful rad mode. Rack up the biggest and coolest <laughs> combos <laughs> along the way. When your time, uh, when you time your landings to perfection, uh, in order to rule the leaderboards, it says just don't slam on your face. Which you I will think, slam yeah, on your face. I didn't. All the rewards that. the most skillful and riskiest players, always tempting them to go for what they uh, that f go. Blah, 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 blah. Always tempting them to go for that audacious 360 backside flip, and ludicrous chain of combos. The chains. Um, when so was it made? when was it released? Um, is it out in Ali Ali 2? Yeah, this Ali Ali 2 is out now. It just came out. I think it's only a couple years old. Mm -hmm. um, but so I, I grew up skateboarding. Yes, you did. Um, I grew up kind of in that world. And Ali Ali, in a lot of ways, feels like, you know, when you talk about a game that just feels kind of punishing, but you like it, mm -hmm. that's Ali Ali. The same way that skateboarding is like really punishing, but the people that are into it really like it. Like, you okay, okay. you don't land most of the things you try in real life. Like yeah, that's true. That's most true. of the things that you're trying in real life, it's like repeat, 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 and you just keep crashing, and yeah. then you land it the one time, and it's like yeah. Or and you land when you're trying to learn how to ollie, and you land with the board between your legs, oh. and it hits your butt bone, and you squeal. Call it credit card. Ball. Is that his credit card? Yeah, yeah. You call it a credit <laughs> card. And I was <laughs> mocked, or I mean, you were mocked for like by your friends for right. days, and you didn't really skate much more after that. Not only because of the pain, but because of pure embarrassment. Slightly That's traumatic. unfortunate. I grew up skating as well in Wyoming, which is a different world entirely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Skateboarding in Wyoming is a different mm -hmm. world. Than O-Town. Yeah, it's totally, it's totally yeah, different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wonderful the so guard. I had cool hair. I thought, I thought Ali Ali was really cool. It was a really fun, creative, like, just 8-bit style, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. arcade -y. Yeah, just super arcade-y, um, but fast-paced and fun was, was kind of my experience with it. I spent a couple hours. Um, I didn't get super far because it is really difficult. Like landing perfectly every time, like that button combo is just, um, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough, right? Like to, to get a good kickflip and then hit X at just the right moment to mm -hmm. slam it down, to do Jeez, the same thing man. on the rails and to go from like a rail to a curb to a downstairs rail to like, it's like one after another for a long time before you finally get to the bottom of your run. Um, super difficult but i i enjoyed it like i i had a lot of fun what about you guys 
I didn't get to it. For me, it, it was, I think the reason that I kept playing it was for the fact that perfection was just right there. <laughs> right out of reach. It was right there. And, like, I kept on messing it up. I kept on getting sloppy landing, sloppy landing. I'm like, but I landed. Maybe <laughs> I'll be better next time. And nope. <laughs> Just like face. Uh, on face and slide. Right. But um, I think that if I had to, the choice between Ollie Ollie or like Runner or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Runner, like that, right? Yeah, yeah. 8-Bit Runner or um, like Trials Fusion or oh, something. Oh, Trials Fusion something is like, awesome. Like this That'd is what it feels like, yeah. just like a little side scroller. Um, I'd play push. Trials Fusion before I'd play Ollie Ollie. Oh, yeah. Trials Fusion is awesome. But I mean, even just like like the prettiness factor for trials fusion like that that'll win me over i'm shallow um <laughs> my whole goal when i played that was to beat your scores because <laughs> you you had already played everything before i got it and so like i was i'm looking at it i'm like who who's freaking psn idea is this that always beats me and i'm like it's robin's well, it's like that's she, it she had i gotta pick it up on. time what's to the, get going the first one we played the roundabout snow globe shooter up Rezogun. Oh, Rezogun. Rezogun, yeah. I, I chased her for a couple of days. I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to do that. Yeah. And then you crush. It's hard, it's hard to catch Robin game. on the indies. Yeah. No, I enjoyed all the, I enjoyed the, the uh, that perfection. I mm -hmm. think my favorite part of it was that the reset time was way different than Witcher. Oh, yeah. as soon as yeah. you crash, oh, you're like, fast. I'm, back. Go, I'm going again. Yeah. I'm, go, I'm going again. And then it was that, that I would do that 40, 50 times on a run and be like, oh, I'm on my face again. Ah, oh, that's going to cost me some money. Facial yeah. reconstruction surgery. Yep. But I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, and that's one of the things, like, you don't really get punished for failing, so I don't feel right. bad. I don't feel bad when I fail. So right. it's like, it just instantly resets. You're not losing money, reset. you're not losing XP. Yeah. Right. Scott says. I know, I know, Scott, that that was you. I just take like, credit for trials. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Just Rat make me out. make me feel kind of cool, all right? Wait, that's what about funny. Rezogun? Tell me that you... No, Rezogun was me. Uh -huh. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would give it, my critic score, I'd probably give it around 70 to 75. 70 yeah. Let's call it 73 for me. I'm, I'm going to go for like a 78 just to be interesting. See, I've given it 80. I'm, I, I, I think I'm comfortable with that score. I think it's fun and um, type of game that it was trying to be. I think it did it really well. I agree. In my I opinion. Agree. And Ollie too. I mean, it's, it's just as more of the same. Going, more yeah. the same. More the same. The, pro the progress you do your training. I did find that uh, I did one night of like the, all the training bits and learning it and I came back like three or four days later and it was like what am wait I, I can't manual anymore i can't uh, mm -hmm. jump anymore like, then i lost it and it wasn't fun i almost had to go back and do training over again so yeah just kind of quickly lost it i was like i don't know i don't know so that was yeah no i, I think it's a pretty good average for us i think so too yep. yeah i think that's it's a high good. it's a high score and it's it's just not you know it's wildly cheap very right. accessible i mean yeah. you're not going to regret getting the game right. yeah right. it's one worth checking out if you if you have any interest in just a fast-paced 8-bit kind of arcadey you know goof around waste time game it's a it's a super super good option so yeah those are our scores um and that ladies and gentlemen kind of wraps up uh, another episode of the little big cast so this has been episode 59 Looking good. Guys. A little big cast. Thank you, first of all, for joining. Uh, if you're watching in chat, thank you for uh, for joining and talking with us and having that conversation. Yeah, Feel free to stick to around that. after we end it officially. Uh, we'll stick around and chat for a little bit. But, um, you know, once every show, we'd like to, to put out a call to action. We'd like to invite you yes. to be part of this community and help us grow. So mostly what team. we're using here, everything that you're seeing here, uh, with the exception of one or two things, is not our stuff and so we started a patreon this to be able to fund um the purchase of some of our own equipment we would love for you to join us um feel free to check out we have some pretty cool perks uh for right. donating and being a part of our patreon group we'll take you um, to dinner and if yes. if you if you feel like uh, that's something that's worth it to you awesome if you don't you know what? We're going to keep doing this, and hopefully we'll win you over. And if but you can't, you can't do something on Patreon, just tell your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, uh, we would hope that you'd hit the follow button if you're watching on Twitch. And outside of that, this is it. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else. I'm Jeff mm -hmm. Hawks. You can follow me at Jeff Hawks on Twitter or Mr. Hawks on the PSN if you want to play. With me, as always, is uh, Rachel or Pirate Rachel with 3 and 7 E. And Robin Hazlett with uh robin hazlett for my twitter handle and then red mages unite on twitch cool cool andrew i'm drew 
<laughs> that's <laughs> true. It is. Nine, that's nine that's is where you, you are. K n i t e two zero on just about everything. On everything, everywhere. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Branding. Yep, yeah. branding that was everywhere. Branding. And this has been episode fifty nine, ladies and gentlemen of the Little Big Cast. Thank you for joining us, and uh, have a have a good one, everybody. Bye Adios. Guys. Solid one hour. That was an hour. Later. With four awesome. percent battery life left, thank you very wow. much. I keep touching your computer. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's play fine. The, Just take it home the, with the you. Chat for a minute.